I feel like I have come here with fresh vigour, so I um, look forward to today's meeting. So welcome to anyone who is watching via live stream. And um, I ask well, that we all stand and I'll read the council for you. Almighty God, as members of the Rangitiki District Council, we give thanks for all the good things of our district and the advantages we enjoy. We pray that you will give us wisdom and guidance as we conduct the affairs of this meeting. We pray for all the communities and the district we represent. Help us to be fair and honest in our discussions and help us to work together in unity for the welfare of all your people. Amen. So I have received apologies from Councillor Kalkin and Mrs Hiroti. Um, do we have a seconder for those? Thank you, yeah, Councillor Wilson. All those in favour? Right. Against? Carried? I've not been notified of any public forum. Right. Uh, item number four, conflict of interest declarations. Does anyone have any conflicts they'd like to declare now? If not, the normal procedure is, if we're discussing matters and a conflict arises, please let us know at the time. Item number five, confirmation of order of business. There are no new items to be added and the order is unchanged in our order paper. Item number six, confirmation of previous minutes. I'll call for any amendments or matters arising. Page six. Page seven, <laughs> eight, nine, ten. Um, just, just on page ten, um, ten point three summary of bad debts. Mr. Turns confirmed he advised further regarding the reason that Maryland is a specific category in its own. Um, I'm not sure that that was transferred to. Um, the, the list of actions, follow-up actions. Um, second one. Yeah, then you second. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Apologise, thank you very much. Yeah. So that was page 10, page 11. Page 12. Can I please therefore have a mover and second to confirm those minutes? I move. Thank you, Councillor Wong. Thank you, Councillor Carter. All those in favour? Those against? Carried. So the follow-up, item number seven is the follow-up items from the previous meeting. <coughs> I'll hold my tongue. <laughs> However, I just would... A comment from me, um, thank you for the emails that were sent out to us. I just wonder, uh, Mr Toomes, could we perhaps still have the response included in there in terms of transparency for the public? Yes, yeah, sure, yeah. yeah. Um, if, if, if you think that's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah that would be great. Any other items that anyone would like to bring up? Okay, so I'd, um, I'd like the follow-up items to be received. Yeah. Moved Councillor Wilson, seconded Councillor Carter. All those in favour? Those against, carried. Uh, no chairs report today. So moving to item number nine. Um, Reports for information. Mm. 
and the financial snapshot September 2023. Mr. Times, would you like to take over? Thank you very much. <coughs> Just to, um, a bit of an overview. As more or less expected, the September results aren't significantly different to the August results, only being two and three months into the financial year. The, uh, and the main point to point out is section 2.2 about depreciation, our inability to really control that cost and the increase we've seen that go through the last two or three years puts a significant pressure on our on our balance uh, balance the budget position, which we're discussing obviously as we go through the long term plan. But that's not a it's not an insignificant increase which we face. With it. And it's probably more for us than other councils because of the large road network we got compared to our reigning database. Want to re-emphasise the, the, the point. Apart from that, I'm happy to take any questions. Yes, any questions? Yeah, and the questions relate to page 26. This is the capital program. And the first question is a general one. And the, the capital, it is labelled as a capital program. Do we take it from that, that we assume all of that then can be CapEx funded? CapEx funded? Uh, it, it, In other words, loan funder. Some of that will be renewals expenditure so the money for that will come from depreciation rating yeah. some will be grant funded and some will be debt funded yeah, yeah. so th that's what i anticipated you'd say i just wondered whether whether there's any any way that we could highlight in this report what is loan funded and what is not um you know because i look at for instance the digitalization of building consents etc um and it is an, a new level of service, and, and we've purchased software and, a pro, and and costs associated with that. Is that something that can be capex funded, loan funded? <laughs> yes, the auditors are having that discussion with us at the moment. Um, but and yes, it, it, the results of digitising um, building consents and data files means that we have a new level of service delivery we can provide. So there is asset enhancement, so it can be capitalised. And similarly, if I come to you know, the vehicle purchases, if we're rep essentially replacing like for like, um, does that drop into um, the ability to loan fund it, or is it an operational expense? The, the fleet, because we've uh, changed our fleet replacement cycle, and because of our... Um, our ability to buy preferred rates. We are now buying and selling vehicles at practically the same value. Yeah. So they're, they're cost neutral. Yeah. Which, which, when I look at the second line of the fleet management, um, in brackets, uh, 120,900, is that because of part of that process? Yeah, so, so that will be the proceeds of the vehicles we've sold this financial year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I anticipate that that's what it would be. But it just looks like an anomaly within the system. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, it is when we the proceeds on disposal are recorded in here. Uh, just the way the mapping works in our finance system. Yeah. So I didn't see them as hugely onerous questions, but. Councillor um, Wilson. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, so two point five and two point six. In in the report around the depreciation costs and i know it's one that we always we seem to raise depreciation as to how we can do that but 2.6 in particular says officers or assessor are assessing whether this cost can be reduced are there realistically any avenues to reduce that i mean based on the fact that our um, assets have increased as you said mainly in road can those can those those assumptions of our assets actually value be, be challenged or is there a fixed methodology that must be followed? To a small extent. So basically the 17 and a half million worth of depreciation, um, over half of that is in the roading network. So over 10 million of that is in roads and we've got very, li very limited ability to change that depreciation or influence that depreciation. Uh, over 4 million of it's in the uh, waters area. And again, very little ability there to influence that depreciation. There is a couple of million in our buildings, community assets, 
and we can look at um, some of the useful lives used there. Um, interestingly, the auditors are saying that we've got $5 million worth of buildings that they think should be written off because of their earthquake prone status, uh, this building being one of them and King Street being another. Um, it's just a book entry, it doesn't mean we can't use the buildings. Now, if we do write them off, that'll save us 100k a year in depreciation. So it's, we're playing at the edges, um, but there is, some, there is some scope to maybe reduce that to a small degree. So, subsequent to that, if I may, Chair, and, and direct along the same lines, the depreciation schedule with regards to the timeline, do we have the scope and the ability to um, uh, depreciate over a longer period of time, therefore reducing the annual impact, which may be outside of what is normal practice in that respect, or is that something we can't play with? Uh, to some extent there is some, but we'd have to have a good reason for doing it. We can't change the useful lives just to reduce our depreciation charge. And the useful lives we're currently using have all been audited and they're, they're, they've been deemed acceptable. So if we've got a good reason, then yes. Yeah, thank you. Mr. Um Just going back to the capital program, <clears throat> the um, budget year budgets are they based on what we're expecting to spend on those projects, not the cost of the whole project? Because I notice, um, say the Ratna one, we've increased our what we're expected to spend by quite a bit, but that's not reflected in here. Right. So the Ratna one, <laughs> as mentioned in the cover report, some of these budget, some of these full year budgets haven't been updated for the September budget changes yet. There will be an October's report, but you're right, there's 875 to go on to that 1.56 for Ardena. Yeah, and oh, yeah, well, I see. So these the budget figures should be the full cost. Or you know, what I'm trying to work out is a, if you've worked out that we spent this much last year on our capital program on a particular project, <coughs> we're expected to spend this much on this year on that capital project. What we're, what we're expecting to spend on each of these projects is the far right hand column, the full year budget. Yeah. But, but bear in mind, we have deferred some budgets to future years on the basis that if we can bring them forward, we will, and that will be a good thing. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Your Worship. Um, if I correct, please correct me if I'm wrong, but in terms of the depreciation schedule attached to roading, it becomes an academic exercise in my, my mind because that depreciation is spent each year on maintenance. And if you don't, if you said, for instance, that, that you're going to remove depreciation funding and roading, which you can't do, but essentially most of our depreciation schedules and roading, um, three waters related things, are spent each year. It's not as if we're accumulating a depreciation um, fund long term. So you either do that, or the consequences, uh, you, or you lift your maintenance rate pay costs. So it's to me, most of that depreciation argument, other than things like buildings, um, is an academic conversation. Am I on target? Yeah. And unfortunately, the depreciation, if I may, as I mentioned earlier, it's a bigger challenge for us compared to most other councils because of our roading network size compared to our number of ratepayers. Yeah. I just didn't want people thinking we're a depreciation <laughs> pocket of money that is sitting there and grows each year by the depreciation schedule because it's just not the reality. Councillor Wong. Could I ask um, Mr. Mm -hmm. Toomis through the chair uh, and um, on, after his worship's comment? Um, is there a figure in here that shows how much of our depreciation funding is actually spent on that budget? Should I know that already? No, uh, I'd be inclined to focus on page 26 of the, uh, the papers, the capital program summary, rather than get focused on depreciation funding and depreciation reserves, just the far right hand column is what we want to spend this year. The full year budget is what we're aiming to spend. And that is the figure that would be allocated against the depreciation budget? If, it's, if, there, if it's renewals expenditure, the money will be in, sitting in... <coughs> yeah. If it's growth expenditure, it's typically grants or debt funded. Right. Councillor Loudon. 
Um, if we go to page 17, whole of council financial summary table, um, Mr. Toombs, can you just clarify that the bracketed numbers are in effect positive and the non bracketed numbers are negative? Yes, thank you. Uh, good point. Yes, so income, in, in accounting terms, income is known as a credit, and credits are always shown in brackets. Expenditures are debits, and they never don't have brackets. So, yes, the income. Um, so, for example, the year-to-date actuals, we have got 11.4 million worth of revenue year-to-date, and we have spent 11.4 worth of expenditure. So, just to clarify, if we go down to grand total, four-year budget, technically we're running at a loss, is that right? Seven, six yes, yes, we, we have an underlying budget deficit, yes. Yeah. 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 Is that likely to improve? That's what the long-term plan will be um, going through, yes. Yeah. But yeah, it depends on what rate increases we, we you impose over the long-term plan and what um, expenditure increases you impose over the long-term plan. Thank you. You wish I'm Supplementary to that, as I understand it, the UK have just recently moved to say that council budgets cannot operate uh, as a deficit. So there's been two or three councils in the UK that are, have now deemed to be insolvent. Yeah. Whereas our system um, allows for a budget, uh, a council budget to be in deficit. But there is, within the Local Government Act, there's a requirement to be able to justify that um, in a long term position. But it's going to, it's going to be a massive problem for the UK now that that legislation has come into effect. Councillor Howden? I know in the long term plan that's already in place, um, there were, I think, two or three years we were looking to be in deficit. Is that going to um, expand to more years? Depends what rate increases we model in the long term plan. So if 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 we prepare a long term plan with say twelve percent annual rates increases, then we'll have some healthy surpluses. But I'd be suggesting that that's not the way we're going to end up. So yeah, unfortunately, the, the deficit position is the result of future rate increases and future expense increases. Thank you, Mr. Holmes. So we'll move to item nine point two, the treasury and debt position. Oh, I beg your pardon. Um, do we have? Uh, I, uh, I'd like to move that we accept um, the financial snapshot September twenty twenty three be received. Is a second, please. Thank you, Councillor Wong. All those in favour? Against? Carry. So moving right along, nine point two, treasury and debt position. 23, 24, page 27. Mr. Jones, would you like to take us through this? Thank you. Uh, similar to the last report being quite early on in the financial year, the, the predicted uh, year-end Treasury position hasn't changed since the uh, last month's paper, and the figures in brackets in sections four shows that the September balances were fairly fairly consistent too. Any questions for Mr. Jones? Councillor Loudon. Um, in this report you've used um, the <coughs> year budget debt, so it's a yearly sort of um, forecast because it's early in the, in the year. You explained that last time. In last September 2022 um, report, you used actuals. Um, are we going to push back to actuals to see a better reflection, just based on my last comment, Julia? Yeah, well, this paper actually includes both now. So the, the I wouldn't say problem, the downside of using year-to-date actuals is that they're very cyclical. Um, revenue, a bank balance can go up. Um, it does go up significantly when rates are due. So there's four times, four months during the year. 
uh, rates goes up significant, uh, income bank goes up significantly, and that doesn't really show where we're going to be at the end of the financial year. So the purpose of this paper is to see wh where where we think we'll be at the 30th of June, as opposed to uh, currently the current trends, because the current trends are influenced by timing things, as opposed to underlying uh, expenditure patterns. You, you can see the year-to-date figures there um, in section four. Any other questions? Chair, I just wanted to know, um, uh, we've just been through an election cycle and people online, you know, we've raised a number of issues over time about Three Waters position um, and people out there are saying, oh, now, now you know that Three Waters is going to sit with, um, potentially back with councils. I just wonder whether it is worth noting for those people online, we're still in a position of not understanding where we're at, where we're at. And we haven't had, still haven't had, we haven't had clear distinction from uh, uh, who will be in government and, and how this will fall. Because mm. there's a huge amount of public interest around this item. Yeah, well, thank you for that clarification. Uh, if yeah. No further questions. Can I please have a, oh, yes. Sorry, just a, a quick observation and it, it don't expect an answer, but a little bit of a focus, I guess, just my take at debt at number five, the number of uh, the value of the maturity date of the bottom three all falling within a fairly close proximity of themselves. And I just wondered if that is something that perhaps from a financial point of view, we should have some consideration to that. I, I just note the maturity dates uh, are effectively more well, than 11 months of each other, and the sum total is $22 odd million. Dollars. <coughs> yeah, um, the that? Treasury, uh, mm, yeah. So the, the Treasury management policy that we updated last month or the month before actually inserted um, a new point in there that says that in future we won't have more than two parcels of debt maturing within six months of each other, I think was the wording. That's, that's right, and that's yeah. what I'm referring to. But how do, can we only deal with that in the future? There's nothing we can do with this. Is there any advantage to us looking at these maturity dates early to ensure that going forward? If we only finance the existing parcels. Yeah, if we're just keeping a focus on what interest rates are doing, and it may be totally unbeneficial to do that, but it's there's a large portion all falling, as I said, within 11 months, effectively, of each other. Oh, we have just set that that requirement within six months, and it um, two, was it two parcels within six months. So we're still meeting that requirement, but point taken, I guess. Yeah, I'm not sure when we'd be taking out more debt, but it will certainly be um, not, not close to them dates. Okay, thank you. So do I have a mover for the receipt of that of the Treasury and Debt r Report 23-24? Thank you, Councillor Wilson. Thank you, Councillor Carter. All those in favour? Aye. Against? Carried. Item 9.3 is the Annual Report 23-23 <coughs> Progress Update. Mr. Tone, thank you. Thank you. Yes, so I think you're all aware that there's a council meeting scheduled for Monday to approve and adopt the 22-23 annual report uh, in accordance with required timeframes. A draft version was provided to the committee last month. Uh, there's not been any significant changes to the key financial statements. Some of the subsidiary information has been updated and cosmetic changes here and there. Uh, we'll be providing a summary of them on Monday when that final report's tabled. Are there any questions around that? Oh, if not, a mover or a second, <coughs> please. Councillor Moore moving. Seconded, Councillor Wong. All those in favour? 
against carried. Item 9.4 is the QV report. Yeah. Standard report, I think you're familiar with now. <coughs> one, one aspect of this out, which I think is quite interesting, is the section 1.3, the, the graphs underneath it. Top left hand mm -hmm. corner is the total capital value of the district. And the movement since the 1st of July, I, I think, is um, surprisingly high for, th mm -hmm. for three months point plus a quarter of a percent. Generally speaking, when that number doesn't increase much till the end of the financial year when. Um, certain things are finalised, so that's an encouraging sign being so early on, a quarter of a percent increase in the um, capital value in three months. For sure. Yeah, and I, I thought it was interesting that the, while the number of building consents um, is, is trending down, the number of sub subdivisions completed is, is trending up. Mm. Any questions? Just, just a quick one. The, um, the total rating units and the increase of, um, what's like plus 48, is that data directly sourced from within RDC? That data? It must be, it must obviously come from RDC and by um, triple C's completed. Is that how that is, data is formulated? I know better than I do. <laughs> I'm not sure whether it comes from them to us or us to them. I'll have to take that on notice. Huh? The point being, it would just be interested to see if their numbers match our numbers. Oh, just, well, yeah. just, just, just an observation for during the financial year they may not, but at the end of the financial year they certainly would. Yes. Sure. Your wish. This is this is an issue that I have raised with council around. Um, there seems to be occasions where houses have been completed, signed off never added to the asset and, and therefore never added to the rating base. So it is a, and I've signalled it on a couple of occasions, it is a concern to me that we may well have other properties that we haven't established that um, literally are just not paying rates that have been never added to the rating database. So is there an action we can get around that to um, try and problem solve that. I mean, it's just a, a very difficult one mm. to actually sort out how we're going to address exactly what his worship saying, other than somebody driving around checking properties. So it is an internal discussion we're having about the best way to do it. Thank you. Councillor Lowden? Um, does council staff have any understanding of what potential building consents in in process, like not not actually being processed, but um, where there are plans to build on sections. There seems to be a situation where there's a lot of subdivisions come on stream, and there's a potential that we'll be left with a lot of sections unbuilt on. Um, is there any way of understanding that? Yeah, we do, we do hold that information, so sometimes those consents and things take a long time, so they won't sit in this report till it's all completely finalised. Um, I mean, we, we could provide that <coughs> if you want to, but I'm not sure. <laughs> it's just going to be a number, because yeah. there's, at any one time, there's a number of consents that are being worked through. Also, just, just to note that a consent doesn't necessarily equal a building. The consent can be for many, many different things. Uh, so just to have a general consent number that the uh, the team are potentially working with could seem to be a rather large number, and, and, and the perception may be that it's consent for a build, but it could be consent to have a fireplace put in, or it could be a consent for an alteration. There's a number of things that sit within that consenting space that don't necessarily equal uh, what may be perceived to be a consent as a house bill. It's quite, and can be quite a large number when you look at them across the board. Similarly, in in the subdivision realm, I mean, it, it could be just splitting up a <coughs> section, or it can be a big subdivision. Mm. Okay, if there's no further questions there, we have a move for receipt of that report, please. Thank you, Councillor Carter. Seconder. Thank you, Councillor Wong. All those in favour? 
against Harry. So, um, item 9.5, the Public Feedback and Performance Report for September 2023. Who is going to take Let's us through this? Let's make a brief comment on this one. You get a break from Mr Toons. <laughs> um, so, between myself, Gaylene, and also Rhonda, um, this report's put together and we're here to answer any questions, but you'll just note this is the first month that we've included the comms report back in there. Now that we have um, capacity in the comms team, we've um, we've included that and Rhonda's here to ask, answer any questions, but also take any feedback on anything else that you might like included. So I'll just pass over to Gaylene if there's anything else. Thank you. Um, and from my perspective, I think you can see from some of the comments um, that it's we've had the school holidays at the libraries. Um, sometimes there's a fine balance between the enthusiasm of the younger children and perhaps the adults. And then, but also it's good to see the feedback that they've enjoyed the school holiday programs, etc. So that's all sort of from me. Thank you. Awesome. <coughs> Councillor Carter. What was the event on the 22nd of the September in the Martin Library? It made a huge spike in a couple of briefs. Hmm. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't answer that. I don't know. I'd have to find out. Any other questions? Yeah. Uh, just, just a comment that, um, and for our meeting, which is coming up on, on Monday with regards to the annual report, this, if it's read in conjunction with the overall um, indication of performance of service, relates directly to what you've just said about uh, some of the comments with uh, perhaps over enthusiasm at school holidays, and, and that is a, that is a trend that we've seen in the past. Mm -hmm. So whilst some of the figures may look uh, on the face of it as being concerning, it is a trend that we've seen in the past, and it is referenced in the annual report for uh, audit report for um, for Monday. Thank you. Uh, I was just interested on page 42, the Korean uh, report, where it was, um, how happy are you with your experience? And it was effectively a third each, happy, um, somewhat happy and unhappy, which kind of goes against the overall happiness we, we see reported in the other format. I just wondered if there was any comment around that. On the following page is where it's broken down because I don't I think there was only three feedback yeah. that time and so on page 43 you can see oh, that directly yeah, relates. It does. Okay, yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So it's just three so three think, participants. No problem. I'd Thank say you. that unhappy was that bottom one asking okay. about the right creatures. Thank you. Councillor Wong? Uh, just a slight tangent to this but the library's um, report here. I um, was at the market day in Mangueka this last weekend and um, visited the library in Mangueka and um, I have not seen any, um, any um, information that we have any input to Mangueka Library, so um, whether this is the right time to bring it up, especially His Worship may have more um, experience in these matters. So, um, I just might be able to add that. to that conversation. So, the Mangawika Library is a community library and it's run by the community. We support them through applying to the Dudding Trust for funding and we can buy um, materials for them, obviously, at our library cost prices. So, that's how we support them, but otherwise, it's community run. Was it the same in Hunterville, I presume? In anywhere else in the district? No. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Any other queries, comments? Okay. Um, final report for the day is. Oh, good. Do we have a mover and a seconder for the? Public feedback performance report. Yeah, move. Just before the, the second mm. note, um, the comment about the, the metal toilets in Tai Happy, I actually share that view. 
Uh, and I know, I know that in terms of, of uh, it is a well-designed toilet and to take on board those comments and so on, but for people having to sit on straight metal, I, think, um, yeah. I know that there is a risk and the toilet seats were damaged and, and all of that, but I still actually support the, the, the comment that has been made here. Can't comment. <laughs> um, off the top of my head, I'm not 100% sure on this, but I think they are the stainless steel and then they've got the black kind of porcelain strip no, on them. No, no they're straight. straight stainless steel. Okay. okay. Yep. And I just wonder rather than just let the comment die, whether there's an opinion that that's suitable. And, um, this is a toilet that is in, the, in one of our principal towns. Any other comments? Uh, Councillor Wong, um, your town. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm not actually loitered around there. I like some visitors. Yeah, um, I, 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 I agree wholeheartedly with that. I think those toilet seats were not that I really do. But, um, I, I think that, and if something could be done, I'd be <coughs> a very positive step. So um, whether it's at this stage or at, at some renewal stage, it would be a very, very uh, um, nice. I'll undertake yeah. to look into that yeah. with my property manager. Thank you. Councillor Moore. All the comments that we get on toilets, this is the first time that one's come up, though, <coughs> about the... But not say it's not important that it hasn't seemed to be an issue with the amount of people that use that toilet, I guess. For sure. But, yeah, it's only a well, We don't, oh, well, yeah, it's unclear to me how many are built like this. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Councillor, I suggest that it goes on the action list to be referred back to the Assets and Infrastructure Committee for further input and uh, understanding of what the issue may or may not be. Yeah. Thank you for that, Mr Chair of Assets and Infrastructure. It would be a great outcome. Um, so we have Councillor Wilson has moved this report. Do we have a seconder, please? Happy to see. Worship the Mayor. All in favour? Against? Carried. But we haven't done the communications report, so we're uh, we not early. Um, <laughs> that's uh, that feedback report. So it was whether there was any further questions on the comms report, if it's oh, giving you what you want. But, um, I was. I do have some comments. Great. Okay. Excellent. So well, I'm sorry. I um, <laughs> did want to carry on with that. My question is around. Um, is there an ability for the, for elected members to suggest communication subjects? And if so, how would they do that? Absolutely. So I had the pleasure of meeting some of, with some of the elected members when I first came on board, and we talked about this quite a bit. Um, if you email through what you would like communicated out, um, and we can make a meeting with you to talk it through, get the tone of what you want, or if it's something like a rapid fire message, then we absolutely can work with you. Just send anything through to the communications email inbox, then we're more than happy to discuss with you or work with you in regards to what that looks like. Um, perhaps we can it. just include that email in, yeah. in the next report. Absolutely. So I just the sort of things that I would like um, to be endeavoured to be covered is like some of our successes. Um, I think to get the trust of the public, we need to celebrate our successes. And so what comes to mind would be um, some of the success of the Mayor's Task Force um, for Jobs um, programme was what immediately came to my mind. Um, but thank you. I think the other thing that we, we um, what I have seen a significant improvement around is, is telling our story. And I think the water strategy and the recent posts around that were absolutely excellent. And thank you for that. 
Councillor Wilson. Uh, I certainly agree with those sentiments on our on our recent comms around the water strategy, Chair. I just wonder if the, the question of comms from um, uh, councillors through Rhonda and the team um, should also be uh, relayed through to the chairs of our community committees because it uh, is a subject that did come up at a recent Martin Community Committee meeting that sometimes they have some relevant stories and, and I just think you know whether or not it's something that we can be facilitated I'm not saying but there may be something that's relevant to those community committees that they're working on which in turn could raise their profiles across the board and perhaps there should be some way that um, uh, you know, it would, it would, anything would need, of course, to be to be approved, as it would be coming out under on a council um, format, and and I th would expect there to be some sort of rules around what would be done. But I think there should be an opportunity for our community committees across the board to also feed into that in some way for activities that they may be under engage, uh, engaging in. Yes, Colleen, um, happy to do that, but we would, um, I think, perhaps what we propose is putting a report to each of those committees and outlining some guidelines around yeah, it would, rather than... I would expect than, that to be absolutely yeah, the case, yeah. yeah. So we can certainly do that so that we can um, yes. keep parameters how we need to. Yeah. Yeah. So a few comments around the tables. We'll start with Councillor Wong. I'm just following on. Um, I've noticed a lot of the, um, the, um, the reports, um, communication coming out on, on, um, on the website, especially through Facebook. Um, Specifically, like the Megaweka um, poison drop, um, I, I, I saw your email, uh, but um, I haven't seen the message through Facebook, and I was wondering whether perhaps um, it may be better included onto the Megaweka Facebook page and specifically onto the actual areas. If I see it, I will, I will share it on that site, but quite often I, I have to look for it. And, and maybe a week or two after after this comes out. So, do you think it's a a reasonable way to actually target the areas specifically? Yeah, absolutely, Councillor. We had already loaded those posts to go through to Mangawika today. I gave you the heads up yesterday right. when I received the information. Right. So we thought we'd give the elected members and the communities groups the heads up first, and that information will be up on the web page. If not now. Um, before lunchtime today, and it'll go out to it'll go out across all our social platforms, but very definitely targeted into the Mangaweka area. We've got access to their community group yeah. as well. Yes, so good. yeah, right on the button. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, um, I'm not wanting to put a dampener on this at all, but it needs some careful guidelines. First of all, we have a, a comms agreement as to who provides comms, mm -hmm. and that, that it's through council. Um, principally the chief executive or myself. Um, celebrating successes and, and advising of events and happenings in the district, absolutely no problem at all. But you've got to be careful that you don't get mixed messages here, whether, for instance, a councillor saying, um, commenting on whether it's the Otara Bridge or something. There are comms structures around these things. And the and the councillors, you know, or community chairs, it should never be seen as um, a political platform and something that is is up for debate at council. You know, it, there's a high degree of sensitivity around this, and and some guidelines would be um, would be appreciated. So you do want to action anything I'll, in the I'll comment? I'll capture yeah. them in the um, action items. So I think at the the points well taken um, that we will work carefully on the guidelines for those committees before we actually propose. I mean, having a, a generic email address is a good thing, but we then will have some guidelines to each of the committees about what the parameters are for what we will and what we don't want to end up doing is being via comms. <laughs> For each of those groups, we just didn't have the capacity either, but no. happy to share some of these stuff. There's so much information that comes before council, um, affects council, that affects other people, such as contractors and so on. And if somebody launches into a tirade as a councillor, for instance, whether it's roading or whatever, 
that a, hip pro a proper process hasn't been gone through to actually validate um, position that can be quite damaging. Mm -hmm. Point taken. Um, Councillor Carter, did you have a quick comment um, or query? Yes, who have, who have found Ben, he's a really, really good pat on the back with his um, Facebook entries, and I'd say it's because because of him, they are, our rating's gone up 169% with nearly mm. 300,000 women people reached. Yes. And with rumours such as the Hoff <laughs> wanting to live in Thai Abbey. Yeah. Um, what was that, 235,000, well, nearly 236,000 people um, were reached regarding it. So that, that's <coughs> absolutely brilliant. <coughs> absolutely brilliant. Yeah. I can just make a comment. We are getting um, really great feedback from his post in particular, and that was that's the benefit of being able to beef up the comms team and have some, someone who's able to spend more time on the social media and sharing messages. Um, we're getting it all the time, which is fantastic. Even um, he was telling me this morning, the Chronicle want to actually do an article on him in terms of his, because he's a comedian as well, if you didn't pick that up. Yes. Um, so comms <laughs> and comedian and how does that fit together? So. So it's getting wider reach than just even our district. We've got followers from all over the country yeah. now, which is great. Yeah. And the conversations have been hugely valuable. So mm. the feedback is not all comedy and um, lighthearted. There's been some excellent feedback and some excellent communication that's come from our, our communities back to us via those means. And we've been able to respond and to redirect and to actually get some good resolution as well. Yeah, it's positive and negative. Yeah. Yeah. So, Councillor Morn. I don't know if it's right for him to bring it up, but talking about comms, um, just got approached by a rate payer up in Huntable about um, the water rates. He was sure. he'd gone up 50% or something like that, or 100%, I think it was. Um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't know any answer to his question. I told him to go and see us. Richard Lambert and Ed Lillerman, but... We're looking into that, yeah. Um, yeah, so I don't... Yeah, what for is sure, the I've reason had, I've had, I've had the same comment... So in, why, as a councillor? In, in, a, um, in <clears throat> terms of comms, I think there's been sadness in the community that there was, you know, no discussion about it. They just got the bill and it was hugely... I think so, that was the point. Yeah, um, so, uh, yes, I have a... I, I'm just going to write an email to Kevin around um, the subject. Yeah. Uh, no, we're, we're looking to understanding the issue before we put any comms out. We don't want to put some comms out that's not um, not accurate. Sure. How, how do you not understand? We must have put the rates up, yeah. so we must know why we put the rates up. At least the background. So when it starts, something started off three years ago, and we just need to understand what it is. I, I can clear that up a bit, uh, <coughs> if I may. Uh, the Hannibal water rates are quite complex. So when they built the scheme, everybody had to nominate a volume of water that they want delivered because that determines the pipe sizes and the pumps and all the rest. To their houses. To their farms or whatever. So as a... We're talking about the township. The, 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 the rural rates haven't changed. It's the township with that the, they've suddenly got this... Un, uh, yeah. So I don't know so whether this is I the just, right form, forum no, probably just, for discussing just, this. Just a, a quick description. So the township nominated a number, and they are financially reliable for that number to purchase that every year. If they use less than that number, the cost of the water is divided by the volume that's used. So when the scheme puts the rates up, our purchase price goes up, and is divided by the number of litres that we sell. So it's a, it's a complex... Situation. Okay, the point is it hasn't been communicated yeah, to the community up there. Yeah, if, if I, it should come back to the asset and infrastructure um, committee rather than this committee. But um, yes, I agree with you, Councillor Morn. Our community was has not been well communicated. No, that's a communication, and that's what hence yeah. I brought it up. Yeah, thank Talking you. About comms. Uh, you wish up. I think. It I think it's ill-advised to carry this conversation on, not because it shouldn't be in the public arena, but literally, we don't know the facts here. Mm. Um, so we, we've, we, cut, we've, we've, we've cutting the conversation, thank you. Yeah. yeah. Um, I 
Okay. Councillor McWilson. Uh, just a recommendation again that it goes through to um, assets for further investigation as part of our um, uh, actions list from today's meeting. Thank you. Bonia. Okay. Oh, Councillor Loudon. Just one thing. Mm -hmm. um, you said you got a lot of feedback through, um, for example, Ben's posts, which was quite helpful to Council. Um, can you share that with councillors as well? Where, what, what sort of feedback's coming back? Um, we've had everything from congratulations and well done posts. So an example of that would have been the spraying at the cemetery. We had huge public feedback from that um, of appreciation. We've had feedback of roading, street lights is another favourite, toilets, graffiti and rubbish are very common denominators as well. So they get passed through the respective process, um, through the RFS process and forwarded through and followed up. Um, but I can provide examples, copy and pasted examples in the next report if you'd find that helpful. It would be helpful, thank you. Awesome. Any other questions? Well, I call the meeting closed. Yes. Time and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Oh, come on.